Hey there, it's Jody Taylor. Whether you're a first time listener or it ain't your first rodeo, welcome to Jody Tried It. This tiny podcast is about my journey of purchasing and trying many professional and personal development tools and resources, such as courses, memberships, subscriptions, templates, and apps. I'll share my honest review key takeaways, and things you might want to consider to help you make informed decisions about your personal and professional development. Now time for a quick affiliate disclosure. Some of the links mentioned on Jody Tried It, either on the show or in the show notes, are affiliate links, and at no additional cost to you, I will earn a commission if you click through and make a purchase. It's a simple way to support the Jody Tried It podcast, and I only recommend products and services that I genuinely love or believe might be helpful to you. Your trust is important to me. Thank you so much, and without further ado, let's hop on into it. Okay, today I am focusing on three apps that I use for content creation. Actually, let's make it five. Let's make it five. I do want to keep this short and sweet. I use way more than five apps total for content creation, but let's break it up a little bit. I'll do five today, and in a future episode, maybe I'll do five more. Okay, let's get into it. Let's hop on into it. So number one, Loom. Loom is an app I have it downloaded on my phone, and I can also use the browser version. Hear me, my phone. On my laptop. Excuse me. I use it on my laptop, not my phone. (laughs) So Loom. It's It's funny because it's the one app, I've had it for about three or four years now. It's the one tool that I think every year, should I cancel this subscription? And you know what? Every year it comes in clutch. I don't use it that often. I would say one to four times a year, but it comes in so handy. What is Loom? It records your screen. How have I used it? I've used it to record courses, mini courses, presentations. Um, I've used it conversationally. Like it is a great way to communicate and get across what you need. A few months ago, I had the pleasure of working with graphic designer, surface pattern designer, Christina Yu. I'll put her link in the show notes. Her last name is Y-U, first name K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A. So when I was talking about ideas, I found it was much easier to record my screen and share images of what I had in mind. Like she could literally see the images. I wasn't describing them. It wasn't a photo in an email with, you know, my my written text. I love email and text exchanges as much as the next person, but sometimes things can get lost in interpretation. Well, if it's written, it's translation, get lost in translation. If it's spoken, it's interpretation. So I just recorded a short video, showed her the images and my thought process, which was a lot easier and shorter to do than writing out the same thing and attaching some photos um, to an email. So again, how I use Loom is to to record presentations, to record um, courses that I have created. It's it's perfect. Again, I do think like, hmm, should I be paying for this every year? And I know that they have a free version, but you know what? I wanted access to all of my videos. I just wanted access to the library. So, And the other thing that Loom changed, it wasn't always this way because, again, I've had it a long time, like three or four years. But in the beginning, you could just go on and record your free Loom videos and there was no time limit. And after a while... I think that's how it was. After a while, it changed to a five-minute time limit. So if you go on YouTube, I have a YouTube video. I think it was my Mary Fitness YouTube video that was exactly like four minutes and 59 seconds. The other thing is that it shows the timer, and that was low-key driving me a little bananas. I Like, it was making me nervous. Anyway, that's why I pay for it. Let's move on to apps that I actually do use pretty often, but I did want to recommend that up front because it has been a game changer and clutch. Next is Cast Magic. I use Cast Magic. It's an AI tool to help create show notes. So I use it for my show notes on my pat my podcast like this one, Jody Tried It, Quick Story Podcast, and Snacky Says Podcast. All three of those are my babies. <laughs> and I use Cast Magic. It turns my audio recordings into transcripts, timestamps, bios, generates titles, keywords, and copy for social media. It also generates the copy for the introduction that you see, depending on which pod, well, you're listening to this podcast. So the intro would be the summary part that sums up what the episode is about. It's based on exactly what I'm talking about now. 
Cast Magic is going to listen to it and their AI automatically comes up with the summary, with the, the episode introduction that you're going to read. Now, of course, I will tweak it and make changes and... I'm going to use the next app, Grammarly Premium. So you can use Grammarly for free. I upgraded to the paid version, and it's one of the best investments I've made in improving my content creation. Of course, it catches grammatical errors, helps me with spelling, the tone of my writing. Like It'll be like, hey, Jody, this sounds passive. Maybe you want it to sound more assertive, and here's an example of that. The greatest feature, which I believe is AI powered or generated, is their impact feature worth the price of admission. What it does is take what I wrote or what I said, because maybe it's coming over from, I've copied and pasted over from Cast Magic, and it gives it a greater impact. It. So, impact. So, it rephrases things, it moves it around, it maybe cuts out things, makes it shorter, longer. I've very rarely have ever been disappointed in the change. Now, I will at times not accept a change. For example, I have the habit of saying, if it ain't your first rodeo, Grammarly would like to change that to, if it isn't your first rodeo, well, I mean ain't. So I'm not going to change it. There are just some things I say or I feel like, I know it's grammatically correct, but it just doesn't sound right. So I don't always change things and I don't always keep it Actually, I very rarely, if I ever keep it exactly how Cast Magic or Grammarly spits it out, I, I make my own changes. It's based on me and what I'm saying and what I'm writing, but I also want to make sure it always sounds like me, me, not a AI version of me, if that makes sense. All right, next up is Tidy Cow. So a while ago, I got priced out of Calendly. They cha- this happens so much. They changed the, their structure. They changed the way they did things. It's another app that I don't use that much. Calendly helps you to set a date with folks, set a meeting, set an appointment, make sure it's on both of your calendars. You can add your Zoom link or, or whatever you're using to meet. It's great. So instead of going back and forth, back and forth in, with email or text messages, they can go to Calendly. Actually, let's talk about Tidy Cal because I'm not on Calendly anymore. They can go to Tidy Cal, look at the dates and times you are available and pick that time. So there's no back and forth. There's also, you're going to write out a description of what the meeting is about and you know what, if anything, they should prepare for the meeting. It's a great tool. The best part price-wise is that it's $29 currently. And when I purchased it for a lifetime purchase on AppSumo, the link will be in the show notes. It is an affiliate link. So if you purchase it, no additional cost to you. I will, or I may get a commission. My affiliate disclosure is going to be as usual in the show notes. Um, this is for you if you want a more affordable alternative to Calendly. I just could not see myself and it was not in the budget to pay monthly for something again I don't use all that much and I just don't feel is as instrumental or like I feel even though I've considered canceling loom I won't because when I have to use it when I do use it it's just clutch I don't feel that strongly about Calendly Um, and the way they restructured it the time I was using it was that I would have to pay for it because just coincidentally, I needed Calendly more at that time than I usually would have for for more meetings and more more things. So let's talk about AppSumo. And I think that is the last app and we're going to wrap up. Well, is it an app? It's a site. Um, AppSumo is the best place, in my opinion, to get software deals for your business. Low prices and lifetime offers are available My two cents would be to jump on it. Many of the deals, if not most of the deals, unlike TidyCal, TidyCal has been on there for a while now, but most of the deals are time limited, so jump on them. I've missed out on one or two apps that I'm so sorry I missed out on because they could have helped me, especially at that price point. They're still available, but they're not in the budget right now. I wish I had got them at that price point because they could have helped with like podcasting, for example. It's kind of hard to tell with AppSumo um, because there are so many apps and it's like, is this something I'm going to use? Do I need it? Even though the ones that got away are simply because I missed the email. I missed the email. I, I know that because I was looking for an app. I had heard of an app and I was like, why does that sound familiar? I couldn't, like I did an internet search and then I went through my email and to my surprise, the offer was in my inbox and I totally missed it. 
the one that got away. Okay, those are my five apps that I use for content creation. Well, five of them, there are more. So that was Loom, Cast Magic, Grammarly Premium, Tidy Cal, and AppSumo. Are they all optional? Yes, very much so. Have they improved my content creation and my ability to connect with folks? Yes. 150%. And one quick note, how I hear about these apps and tools, my number one resource um, are newsletters. Folks like me, you know, mention what they're using in their newsletters, and that's how I usually learn about an app. And then second would be literally emails from someplace like AppSumo, and then YouTube University. Again, I'm watching YouTube and someone mentions the app or apps that they use. Those are probably the top ways that I learn about um, apps and also, again, podcasts like this. So other content creators just talking about what they use. So yeah, continue to tune into podcasts like this. Sign up for newsletters where folks are talking about content creation or just check out YouTube. Okay. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be Thanks so much for listening. I actually dropped my phone low behind the scenes. I dropped my phone, but the whole episode is still here. Thank goodness. Thanks so much for listening. Um, I will have future episodes that go into other apps and how I use them. And maybe even I'll make it more specific, like the apps I use, what goes into my podcasting workflow and the apps that I use and sites that I use. Some of them that I, some that I mentioned today, like Cast Magic and Grammarly, um, I for sure use for the podcast. Um, but uh, again, I'll, I'll probably do something in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode of Jody tried it. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my newsletter at jody.substack.com. That's J O D D I E.substack.com. And please share with a friend or three. Thanks for listening.